Well, hey there, boys and girls of the YouTube world. Today, Duffy and I, we're going to show you how to make wheels turn that don't turn. As you can see, the old 55 Chevy big back window sat in a little bit of moisture right up to about here. And it got into the hub, so I don't know if this is going to work, but we're going to give her a whirl. This is a trick I've used before. Uh, somebody's probably going to get mad because I'm going to ruin a few parts, but we're going to replace those later. Or somebody is. Usually I like to spin the lug nuts off, and that's where I start, but these ones are so rusty, and a couple of them are already missing, so I think we're going to use the old liquid wrench and heat them up first. See if we can try to save them, because without any lug nuts or wheel studs, there's really no point in making it roll because you can't put a wheel on it then. Here we go. Duffy, grab the torch and my glasses. Well, it looks like the easiest of the four remaining ones came off pretty good. Let's go on to the next one. This one down here is significantly larger than it should be due to corrosion. Oversized like the race cars. for two good thing we started with the easy ones those threads might clean up on those other two so if these snap off we're not out too much Let's see if we can get a oh yeah the socket don't even want to go on there well let's get something to knock that debris off there Socket's warm yet. It's like a sparkler in there. Cackling away. You're not going to want to grab that lug nut right away after you warm her up with the old gas axe. She's a little warm. Let's try heating up this last furry oversized lug nut and see if we can't melt her down to dimension so that the three quarter socket fits on it. Back up. That rust goes sailing everywhere. And it's warm. Get on there. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Hot socket. There we go. Look at that good Brampton soil. We'll just set that up there to fall off on the highway. Oh boy, isn't this a treat. See all that scaly rust? That's the brake drum. Yowza. Here's where I get out the gas axe and usually trim around the hub. This one's kind of pre-trimmed, so we're gonna just knock out what we can and go from there. Oh my, this is a new low for me. I've never seen a breaker on the you can put a pry bar through. It's the lightweight racing option. Definitely don't want a trailer with this though. I'm sure all that seaweed in there isn't going to want to start on fire. Now usually what I like to do is try to find out about where the hub is at because you don't want to cut into the hub because some of your disc brake kits require using that same hub. 
I don't know, maybe someone who's going to put an independent front suspension and ditch this axle anyway, but I like making them roll so that I can push them around, load them on guys' trailers, get them in and out of the shop and whatnot. So usually I find where the hub is, try to trim around the hub, and then I make another incision just slightly further out in the radius, and then the hub will turn, but the brake stays still. Some guys don't like this because it says it ruins the brake drum, but odds are you're either going to buy new brake drums or convert it to some other type of braking system. So we're not out anything, especially on this one because I don't think there's any putting that one in the brake lathe and cleaning it up. I just did kind of one big cut around there, made it wide. We'll see if it just wiggles, just, just a little wiggle. That'll give us a glimmer of hope. Cause I'm guessing those ball bearings in there, yeah, they're not roller bearings. They're your caged ball bearings that are pretty expensive. I'm betting those are seized up. See what happens. Woo! Good to go. We gotta do a little bit more trimming down here. But she turns. So I guess instead of making two cuts, you could make one wide cut if you can get it in the perfect spot. But I'm not perfect. Maybe you are. Let's get some of this debris out of there. It'll torch better. Oh my goodness. Probably have a mask on because I bet there's some asbestos in that. That looks like I got a lot of material left, so I think I'm just going to go back, trim this up a bit on the top here because it's quite a bit bigger there in diameter. Because cutting down there sucks with all that debris in there. Here's that ring that I was talking about that I usually cut out of there. Good to go. Wow, those bearings don't even sound that angry. So there you have it. That's how Mortski makes a immobile vehicle mobile. We'll throw some different wheels and tires on here. Finish up doing the other three because of course they don't turn. Well, one of them turned a little ways, but we're going to do the same thing with that one. Like I said, ruins the brake drums, but you're probably going to be putting a different style of brakes on it anyway, or putting new drums at a minimum, but this is a good way to get something freed up that's been sitting in the woods or the swamp, or for whatever you got going on in your neck of the woods, and you can make it roll to get on the trailer, get it in and out of your shop, or get it onto somebody else's trailer if you're trying to get it out of your yard. All right, thanks for watching. I appreciate it. Click like, share, subscribe, comment. Tell me on how terrible of a job I'm doing here. Appreciate it, everybody. Have a good one. And remember, it doesn't matter how you get it done, just as long as you're having fun. Oh, man. This was a terrible purchase.